When creating a new view application via the view build tool, the pre-generated about view is imported slightly different within the router. Instead of the component option accepting the name as the default route does, it's accepting a function with the import of the component itself. This is referred to as a dynamic import and enables what is called route splitting or lazy loading. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is route splitting and why might we do this? When building view applications, the bundle JavaScript can become quite large as your application continues to grow. Route splitting is going to split each route into a separate chunk and only load that chunk from the server when the route itself is visited. This will reduce the initial JavaScript bundle size, therefore improving the user experience and increasing the page load time, which is crucial for search engine optimization. Let's take a closer look. Inside of the router, let's remove the dynamic import and import the about view at the top of the file just as the home view is. Then we'll need to assign the component option the name specified in the import. Let's navigate to the browser, open up the console, and select the network tab. We're also going to want to filter this by JavaScript. Currently we're on the home route, but you're able to see the JavaScript for the about view was also loaded in when we navigated to this route, which is unnecessary since we're currently not on this route. Within the router, let's re-add the dynamic import. Now within the console, when we're on the default route, we're no longer going to see the about view JavaScript loaded in. However, once we navigate to that route, then it'll be loaded in from the server. After the initial request, it'll just use a cached version. Now, this approach is really not as significant in smaller applications, but as your apps continue to grow, it'll become more noticeable. And in general, whether your application is small or large, it's a good idea to utilize dynamic routes. To take things a step further, you're even able to lazy load components within views themselves. The most common example I can think of is a modal. In the components folder, I've went ahead and created a simple modal component. Inside of the home view, let's define the base modal. To hide and show the modal, we'll create a new ref of is modal active with an initial value of null. Then on the base modal, we'll set a vif directive equal to is modal active. This will only show the modal component if the variable is true. Beneath the modal, we'll create a button and when clicked, this will update the isModalActive variable to true, which will display the modal. In the application, let's navigate to the console and select the network tab. Again, we're going to want to filter this by JavaScript. Currently, our modal is not open, but as you can see, we have the JavaScript loaded in for this component, which is unnecessary since we're currently not using it. To lazy load the base modal, we can use the define async component function from view. The argument can either be a loader function or an options object for more advanced control of the loading behavior. For now, we'll keep it simple and stick with the loader function, which for most of the time you'll likely use this method. In the script, we'll want to create a new variable base modal and set it equal to the define async component function. This accepts the loader function. Within this function, we'll want to define the import syntax for the component as if we were importing it normally within the script. The import syntax returns a promise and will resolve once a component has been retrieved from the server. And that's all you have to do. Back in the application, if we check the network tab, we're no longer going to see the base modal JavaScript initially on the page load. When we click on the button to open the modal, then that'll be loaded in. For more advanced control, the function also accepts an options object where you're able to define a loading component for when the component is loading from the server, a delay for showing the loading component to assist with flickering on fast networks, an error component if there is an error, and also a timeout. There is even a custom on air hook and an option to make it suspensible, which by default is true, as asynchronous components are suspensible by default. For example, maybe this modal will return some sort of data from an API, which can take time to resolve. To mimic an API request, inside the base modal script, we can await a new promise and resolve it after two seconds. Back within the home view, we need to wrap the base modal component in a suspense tag. The base modal will be our default content and will also provide fallback content while the base modal is resolving inside a template with the fallback slot. When we open the modal, we'll see the fallback content while the component resolves. Just to note, when a component is suspensible, all the options within the define async component are going to be ignored and they'll be controlled by the suspense component. The async component can, however, opt out of the suspense component and let the component control its own loading state. Now, for the most part, when using the define async component function, I mainly utilize it with just the loader function and the suspense component. 
Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of lazy loading your routes and components to improve your application's performance. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, take care.